we can't quite just call it a Cold War. I mean, what, what is the state of relations between NATO and Russia today? It's adversarial to the point that Russia now sees NATO as its enemy, and frankly, NATO sees Russia as an enemy. Not just a threat, but an enemy. A country that is determined to find a way to exert influence through use of military force, possibly including against NATO territory. That's something that we haven't thought about uh, in the NATO parlance since the end of the Cold War. And frankly, even during the Cold War, the likelihood of a Russian military attack, certainly towards the end uh, of the Cold War, was discounted. But here we see it in real life, every day. Russian military forces crossing a border in order to, to enlarge their own territory. Imperialism and aggression in real time. So the relationship is not one of partnership. When I was NATO ambassador in 2010, we talked about the potential of a strategic partnership with Russia. No one in NATO today talks about the potential of a strategic partnership with Russia. It is the most important military threat, and that's very different. What we're saying is that the military confrontation today of the global order, leaving aside any other threats, is absolutely not just as bad as when the Cold War was in place, but in some ways it's worse. In some ways it's more dangerous. Yeah. Because during the Cold War, since the late, sort of mid to late 1960s, there was an attempt by both the United States and the Soviet Union to find ways to coexist, to talk to each other, there was arms control, there was the hotline, there were a whole series of agreements that said, let's manage our military competition in a way that we know that the only reason we will ever have a war is if somebody decides that that's what they want to do. No accidents, no escalation, none of that. We even had arms control agreements. We had a European conference on security and cooperation that led in 1975 to the Helsinki Final Act that defined the relationships of all countries in Europe and, uh, and North America. All of that's gone. Russia has just walked away from the last arms control agreement that existed, the START agreement uh, that limits the nuclear warheads that the United States and, and Russia are, uh, are allowed to, uh, to deploy. Russia has just said that they will no longer tell the United States when it tests ballistic missiles. We've been doing that for 50 years, we're telling each other, because we want to know if they're testing a ballistic missile that is not an attack. That's all gone. So it's a very, very dangerous military situation in which deep distrust of each other, the possibility of a military confrontation between two nuclear-armed nuclear -armed adversaries is larger now than it's probably been since the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962.